Let's do something. Let's just let's just give him thanks this tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we receive of your word tonight. And every word that comes forth out of the mouth, hallelujah, shall be sown in good ground. And it shall bring forth fruit. Glory be to God. We prepare our hearts to receive of what you have in store for us. We enter your course with thanksgiving, or in your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your course with praise tonight. And we thank you in advance that this is going to be the most dynamic message we've ever heard. And it's going to bring about a better trans transformation than we've ever experienced. And we give you all the praise. And we give you all the praise. And we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Well, he's building all the shadows that fall across my path. God is building in the mountain that I can or cannot see. Well, he's building my confusions bigger than anything. God is building in the mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all my questions. Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my hang-ups, he's bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Oh, he's bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can see.
said Abraham, how far can you see? My servant Abraham, how far can you see? Can you count those stars up in the sky? Say about the sea. Oh, the Lord said Abraham, how far can you see? Oh, this word 
natural, the carnal part of man. And he said, hallelujah, that, that uh, uh, he that letteth will let yeah. until he be taken out of the way. Hallelujah. Well, that ain't the Holy Ghost being took out of the way. That's the carnal man being dethroned. Yeah. When Jesus Christ moves in and sets up his throne in our heart, he rules from the throne of our beings. Amen. We are inhabitants and inhabitants of the kingdom of God. And we're not here just as loyal subjects and patrons of the process, but we are kings and priests. We are sole inheritors of Christ and His throne. We didn't just inherit Him, we got all that came with it. We got all authority. We got all power. And the Bible said in James 4, said you have not because you ask not, and you ask and have not because when you do ask, you ask amiss. And it meaning there that you ask, but you don't know who you are or when you ask. Hallelujah. You're not asking right because you're asking as if it's a maybe thing. When Jesus said, everyone that asketh, receive it. And everyone that seeketh, find it. And everyone that knocketh receives an open door. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank God when he said, He that let it will let until he be taken out of the way, he meant he was going to dethrone right. those thoughts of natural means and carnal ways and so forth. And he said, Whom the Lord shall destroy with the brightness of his coming and with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. We're going to, we may get into talking about some of that tonight. The word coming, the coming of the Lord, that's parousia. In the Greek, it means the appearing. Yes. It's talking about Jesus appearing to you in various forms of revelation in life. Yes. Unveiling more and more of himself, uh, letting you see deeper and deeper into the things of the Spirit until all the mist is passed and you can clearly see what the plan of God is. Amen. And until that hour comes, we go through many changes, many metamorphoses, many appearings of the Lord Jesus. That's the reason there can't be such a thing as a second only coming because we go through many appearings of the Lord Jesus and He gets brighter and He gets brighter. Praise the Lord. That's the way His revelation works. It is an ever-growing process of unfailing truth after truth after truth, line upon line, precept upon precept until He has fully come or fully been revealed unto to us. Amen. Amen. That's the reason the doctrine cannot be true. It cannot be true that the only appearing of the Lord is the second time in the end of the age. That cannot be so because you can't know Him like that. You know Him in the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. If you think that a man it's going to appear to take a bunch of people out of here who's just as ignorant as they were. Hallelujah. It ain't going to happen that way, folks. He is bringing us to a day when He shall fully unveil Himself. And I don't mean out here somewhere, but I mean, oh, shalom andalabahusandalabahaya. I mean right here on the inside of us. And when He shall appear, then we shall appear also with Him in glory. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Now we all sit in this room tonight and we can fathom that. You know why? Because that much of the light has been allowed to shed abroad in our hearts. But I want you to know that that little five minute talk I just gave you could not be received in a million places of worship. I don't mean just the last part, I mean the whole part. Because they have not yet experienced that coming of His revelation. 
they have not yet to experience that perusia, that appearing of His glory, His unveiling of His self in them. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm glad I had come to the mountain that might not be touched. But I've come to Mount Zion tonight, to the city of the living God, to the innumerable company of angels. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus is the lighthouse. Hallelujah. Jesus is the lighthouse. And if you're sailing out there and he ain't shined unto you, you're just blind and dark and can't see and don't know where to go. But if he can just beam right down where you're at and illuminate the path, then suddenly somebody knows the way. They can stand up like Paul when everybody else is jumping ship and say, Sirs, be of good cheer. The Lord has sent his angel to stand by me this night and reveal to me not one life shall be lost. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Don't you love Jesus tonight? Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Tom, Brother Ben, and get the offering tonight. I want to thank all of you for your giving this week thus far. Bless you for everything you do tonight here. Amen. Give us unto the Lord and with a cheerful heart. Let him make his grace abound towards you in all sufficiency. Hallelujah.
We sell these out. We'll order another one with the money we sell these for. Amen. Just keep ordering more. But they'll be a blessing. It'll be a blessing to you. If you know sick people is believing for a healing, get them on them books because there's a, a, just a testimony after testimony all through my ministry, all through uh, my granddad's ministry, all through different ones, even clear back to uh, thoughts about Azusa Street and things like that. So you'll be blessed by it. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want to start reading in the 60th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And then I'll go over and catch a few verses in the 30th chapter of Isaiah. Uh, Sunday morning I started preaching about the subject of visions and revelations. And uh, then Sunday night got on the blood. And so uh, I think what we'll do, the Lord permitting it, uh, is on Wednesdays we'll stay on this visions and revelations and Sundays for a few weeks anyway I'm going to try to stay on the blood and we're going to have a good time learning the Lord just giving us insight and precepts and concepts of his word I'm believing that we've never had before unveiling new things and I talked to the Lord about this today. I went in and prayed a while this evening before coming over here. And I talked to the Lord about it. And I really felt let it go this way. But somehow or another I couldn't help this scripture uh, to start with this scripture. Arise and shine. And uh, so I got over here tonight. And when I went back to uh, speak to Marlene, she had a paper. And she had found it. And... Uh, I guess she found it today, maybe. And uh, this brother and his wife had written, and she had let me read a book they had written of the, of the poems in it. Just beautiful, beautiful. Holy Ghost inspired poetry. And this same folks wrote it, and I opened it up and sat down by and read it. It wasn't very long at all. And the first thing standing out, big letters on the first column Arise and shine. So, hallelujah. I like I like to I want to hit the, the target, but I'd rather hit the bullseye yeah. every time. Amen. Amen. And I like the Lord knows that I relish in him giving me confirmations like that because that lets me know supernaturally yeah. that I'm on the right course. Amen. And but the sixtieth chapter of Isaiah, I want to read down through I think it's the fifth uh, verse. And we'll know the first one, but the rest of them we'll have to read. The first one, of course, said, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now, the glory of the Lord doesn't fall. We often say the glory fell, but it did not fall. It rose. It rises like a mist. It's a cloud. It comes up. Uh, Elijah said, seen the, said the man said he had seen a cloud coming up out of the sea uh, like a man's hand. So when the glory manifests in our services, it didn't fall on us. It rose up in the midst of us. In other words, it's the incense. It's the sweet savor. God's approval on our worship when we worship Him, He sends His manifesting presence and glory. And then He said for uh, darkness on the people, gross darkness on the land. But on thee, the Lord shall arise. Amen. And His glory shall be seen upon thee. Now, God is not wanting His glory to be seen in a wall. And God's not wanting His glory to be seen in a roof. And God's not wanting His glory to be seen in just on some part of the building. But on us, Amen. the glory is here because there's people here who carry the glory. Amen. You understand that? Yes. That glory had to come from somewhere and Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen to God. So when the glory manifests, you're seeing what's on the inside of us. 
coming forth and manifesting in the midst of a tabernacle or an assembly or wherever. Glory be to God. Amen. But he said in the next verse, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So there's more than the glory rising. It's because the king is rising. In his people, amen. One time the Lord said to Israel, why do you groan and moan like you do? Is there no king in thee? Oh, hallelujah. And when back over there in Numbers 22 and 3, when Balak tried to get Balaam to prophesy against Israel, and he took him to a high mountain and looked down on the Lord's people, and Balaam said, or Balak told Balaam, said, See all them people? Said, not only is there a bunch of them, but they're all shouting. They're all got victory. And he said, there's a shout of a king among them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, when you got the king, you've got all authority. That's right. You've got all power. There ain't none of this weakening down. But you rise up in authority and in dominion. Can you say, praise the Lord? Anytime there's fear involved, it's because you backed away from your identity. You've got to recognize who you are in Him. Yes. In yes. Him I am a conqueror, more than a conqueror. Yes. In Him I am the head and not the tail. In Him yes. I am the lender and not the borrower. In Him I rule and I reign in life as King. Hallelujah. Yes. So He said the kings are going to come to the brightness of thy rising. And then He said, lift up your eyes round about and see all oh, they gather themselves together and come to thee and thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. And this verse in number five said, Then thou shalt see and flow together. Well, what are we going to flow in? Revelation. Glory. Manifestations. Visions. Oh, hallelujah. You know anything you have to force just don't fit. If, if it don't flow, get rid of it. In a service, the least little thing can turn a meeting into a force instead of a flow. And you have to be sensitive enough to the Spirit to know when that's happened and get it changed back over almost instantly. If not, you won't never get it back to the round it was. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes, just singing a song one more time will bring the breakthrough. Will cause the people to tap in to what's there. And then other times, that one particular song that worked last week may not work this week. And if it don't work, for God's sake, shut up and move on to the next one. Don't keep trying to fit or fit. Something. We're fluid with this thing, not forcing. Can you say amen? A lot of people say, well, and I've answered a lot of the, one of the longest chapters in that book is on prophecy. Detailed, detailed things about prophecy. And one of the questions a lot of people often ask is, is it okay to prophesy when the minister's preaching? Well, yes, it's okay. As long as the prophecy will carry the preacher and the people higher than what is manifested at the present moment. But if it's going to bring everything lower, keep your mouth shut. Amen. It ain't time to give it. You may have a word from God, but He may not let you give that word till the night service or the Wednesday service. Or He may say, wait a minute, I'll tell you when it's the right time. So he said, oh, but you illusion. No, you won't do it. The spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophet. Amen. And he said, amen. amen. So he said, you shall see. Notice that. See visions. Vision. Vision. Everybody in the spirit has got to come to the place that they can see by the Holy Ghost. See what God's doing. See What's happening in this area? You know why some services tend to be a blunder? Because people there have no clue what God wanted to do in that meeting. Hallelujah. 
I'm preaching now, you just don't know it. They had not a clue. They don't even know when the thing shifted. They don't know if it falls or rises. All they know is they like goosebumps. And they like doodads. Well, so do I. But if we don't find out how to get them and keep them there, what good is it if we go get high? Some services, Sister Hepburn said, is like a roller coaster ride. About the time everybody gets high, they jerk you good and send you back down. And about the time you get used to riding on that level, they jerk it again and bring it back up. But how many know when you flow with the Holy Ghost by vision and revelation, the Spirit telling you what to do next on the inside? It's a steady flow of the presence of God. You know, we were raised for years to believe the high-low life. Wasn't it? The high-low life. We were programmed to know some services was going to be good, wild, powerful means, and other services, well, we just did it because we were supposed to had obligation to God. Nobody felt anything. Nobody heard anything. Nobody seen anything. They all just gathered together and had a lovely little meeting of a religious statue, took care of the religious business for that week, and went on about their business the next day, knowing not even realizing it. God had said a word. But if you were in a meeting that's run by vision and by revelation, when you get up the next day, what happened that night before will still be turning on the inside of that ain't all. God will continuously show you and reveal to you and unveil to you more and more things that happened in that service you weren't even aware of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Otherwise, all we've done is gathered, looked at one another, yeah. sat through an hour, went home, and that was it. Some meals I go eat, I relish, I love them. They're delicate, they're, they're rich, they're full of taste, they're wonderful. I'll sit at the table longer. If it's good enough, I'll have a piece of pie and a cup of coffee and sit there a little longer. And when they, they give me the bill, I'll put a good tip on there because I enjoyed that meal. But if I'm just going to run over at Wendy's and get a hamburger, I'm not going to relish over that hamburger. I'm not going to chew too slow and just get all those flavors because all it is is a piece of beef and a loaf of bread and a piece of cheese maybe. I've eaten that before. It's normal to me. I don't get excited when I hear somebody say we're going to Wendy's and get a hamburger. But if I hear somebody say let's go get some crab legs or let's go get some seafood or let's go get some good steak over here at this place. Then I go in there and put a little better shirt on. Hallelujah. I might even run the comb through my hair one more time. I get in get out and go in over and I don't run in there and sit down and just slouch around and, and hurry up and get out of there. No, I go in there and wait. I get an appetizer. Then I sit and eat that and I'm building up to that time when they bring. Well, I want you to know that's the way it is when you learn to flow by vision and revelation in God. You don't just run into a meeting like you're going to chew a hamburger. You look forward to every piece that God is going to feed you because out of your belly there's a flow that is causing you to live again. Hallelujah. Not just ordinary life, but life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you got to get in that mode and that's the reason the Bible said they shall see and when they all get to see it, they'll start flowing. If you don't see, you can't flow. You've got to become aware of His presence. Because His presence is a very peculiar thing. Sometimes it'll come in and scream like a slap of wind. And, and, and everybody just gets blown off their feet. And other times... It comes in so gentle. But if you don't have the seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord has made them both. That's what the Word says. If you don't have that seeing eye to understand what's going on in your midst, and if you're not sensitive and keenly tuned in to the Holy Ghost, there ain't no telling what you'll miss. You know why many people are 
don't they, they don't understand the Lord's coming because He's come and He's come over and over again to them, and they knew not the day of His visitation. Isn't that what the Word said? They knew not the day of His visitation. But the prophet Isaiah said, "They shall see and flow together. Their hearts shall fear." And let me tell you something. Whenever they start seeing and flowing together, what does it say? They'll be enlarged. Yeah. Hear me, friend. Enlargement from God doesn't come by you rubbing shoulders with the right person, by you serving enough coffee and donuts to get up a crowd. But it comes by revelation, knowledge, and by seeing into the spirit realm. Vision is the window to the supernatural. Vision is that vortex, that hole, that connection, that tunnel, that go through where you, hallelujah, go beyond these realms and into his world and get a hold of spiritual things. Oh, praise the Lord. We read Sunday morning how uh, Elihu got out from the ordinary broke free from the crowd and said, I ain't like y'all. All, All y'all got a bunch of questions, but I got an answer. He said, I'm a vision. I'm an interpreter. I'm one among a thousand. God has spoken once, yea, twice, in a dream, in a vision. Come on. But look here. Who hears it? Right. So what if he speaks? If you ain't got no ear to hear what he said, so what if he speaks? You've missed it all together. Hallelujah. You know why our spirit has anybody can testify that they, they go through times their spiritual life almost gets ruddy. You're like you're in a rut. You can't get that fresh. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we don't plug in. We don't tune in. And, and beside the fact that most people in that category don't never pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Holy Ghost, you'll stay plugged in. Amen. Hallelujah. But enlargement. That's one of the prophecies. Then he said, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come up. Notice, 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 when you get flowing, the force has to give up its hold. Right. That force has to just stop and flow. The Bible said in Isaiah 2, the mountain of the Lord shall be established on top of all the hills, and the desire of all nations shall flow unto it. Glory be to God. Shall flow. Listen, if you if you got to force it, if you got to force the issue, if you got to force the message, if you got to force the word, if you got to force people, you can just forget it. When I first started preaching, I guess I was like our pastor always said when he first started, he shot at anything that moved. And then he learned better. Well, I did the same thing. I tried to force people to break through. I tried to force them to get in and listen to what God did. It dawned on me one day. It wasn't that they wouldn't listen. They couldn't hear. They didn't know what was being said. They weren't plugged in. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. So we can come in here and meet together. And we can have big crowds or little crowds. And we can have wonderful, we'll never know, have wonderful music because we have wonderful musicians. But if they don't plug into the power, they'll tell you. It's a struggle the whole time. Look, uh, if you take music for an example, I can, if I have to sit there, if I ain't in the spirit, I know when I ain't in the spirit, I have to think about this change and that change and where this finger needs to go. And that, But when I get in the spirit of worship, praising the Lord, these musicians will tell you it's just like your fingers turn into a water faucet. They'll just flow. You don't have to worry about a thing. You just go with it. You, you can hear the sound before you play the sound. Praise the Lord. But see, it's that way with all of us. Whether you're on the pew, whether you're in, 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 in the pulpit or whatever. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, then shalt thou see and flow together the forces of the Gentiles 
The Gentiles are one who couldn't hear. He was the one outside. But their forces are going to have to give up and they're going to flow into this thing. The Bible said in Isaiah 2, as I told you, the desire of all nations shall flow. When? When the mountain of the Lord is established above every other mountain. When the mountain of the house of the Lord gets to be the only house we desire, and that ain't desire in this building, and this roof, that's desiring that place of fellowship with Him where we hear His voice as one. Glory be to God. David said one thing, have I desired of the Lord, and that one I seek after, that I may dwell in His sanctuary all the rest of my days, beholding His glory. Amen. When our desire gets to be for the glory, when our desire gets to be what is God saying, when our desire gets to be what is the Lord revealing in this hour, then suddenly we find ourselves swept up in a current of glory. We no longer are paddling our boat. We no longer are stroking with our arms trying to swim. But we let the current of His Spirit lift us up and carry us away. And suddenly we find out we're living abundantly. Our needs are supplied. We don't have any questions. Our fears have supplied. Subsided, our strife is over with, our nerves are settled. Why? Because His glory has taken us to a dimension in Him where we see and know by revelation Hallelujah. what God is doing in this hour. Now, if you don't end, that's called entering the rest of the Lord. And the rest of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. When you get in the Holy Ghost, you are in the rest of the Lord. And when you're not in that rest, you are constantly striving and struggling, trying to keep the victory, trying to keep the faith, trying to believe God, trying to stay positive, trying to say the right thing. But I'm talking about a realm in Him where you don't have to try to do anything, but it's the flow of His anointing in your life that does it all through you. This is what Paul meant when he said, Nevertheless, I, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Hello, church. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Now go with me to Isaiah 30, verse 21. Mine ears shall hear a voice, a word behind me, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left, and ye shall defile also the covering of those graven images. Hallelujah. Every thought that exalteth itself, you see, against the knowledge of God, those graven images of silver and ornaments of molten images of gold, thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Now that's you talking to you. That's you speaking to your carnal mind. Cast it off. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he said, notice there, he said, cast it off as a menstruous cloth. Now how many of you know in the old law, that's the curse. That's a cursed thing. Because when Isaiah said all thy righteousness is as filthy rags, that term filthy rags means menstruous cloth. All your righteousness, everything you can muster up, all that you try to make happen is unacceptable to the Lord. You're trying to do it isn't good enough. My trying to do it isn't good enough. But when the Holy Ghost on the inside of us is loose so that He can do His thing, we've sold Him out. He's a teacher. Jesus said He'll teach you all things. But in that respect, we've not given Him His free reign. Right. We want Him to anoint what we've taught ourselves. Oh boy, that's a statement. We want Him to bless what we've conjured up. Listen to me, church. You better just throw your recipes away and start all over with the Holy Ghost and let Him teach you from square one. Because according to the prophet's words, there is a realm in God where when you pick your foot up wondering which way you're supposed to go, there will be a voice right. that speaks to your life and says, this is the way. Walk 
in it. Walk in it. Oh, praise his holy name. See, this is what living by vision and revelation will do. God will show me what I need to know. He'll tell me what I need to know. There's no use in me sitting around trying to figure it out. No use in me wringing my hands. No use in me fitting in with the ordinary crowd that said, well, I guess whatever will happen, I have no, 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 no. Vision and revelation. Vision and revelation. Any time in my life I want to know something, God never told me no. He answered me. He told me what I wanted to know. The Bible says a simple verse. Moses said it in Deuteronomy. Ask thy father and he'll show thee. How many times do we go scooting off, treating the same old problem just because we've had it before, the same way we treated it before, and it ain't the right way, and it don't work. You know why? Because God means for us to depend upon His revelation. He means for us to get a word from heaven. While you're out there skirting around having your nervous breakdown and carnal fit, the Holy Ghost is deep down on the inside of you saying, if you get somewhere and get quiet and ask me, I'd reveal to you what the plan of God is for this. I'd show you what my will is in this situation. I would tell you what you're supposed to do. Should I go or shouldn't I go? He'll tell you. Should I should I uh, get this or not get this? He'll tell you. Should I go here or there? He'll tell you. Should I uh, uh, leave this house and buy this one? He'll tell you. Should I? Should I? He's got all the answers tonight. I want you to know there's not one question in your life right now that God is not sitting on it just wanting you to ask Him so He can reveal the answer to you by His Spirit. Amen. But we try every thought in the house before we get the right one, don't we? And all the chickens are bigger than the pots. And we can't get them to fit. But God's got a pot for every solution. He's got all oh, for every problem, he's got the solution. For every question, he's got the answer. For every need, he is the supply. Oh, hallelujah be to God. I'm telling you, and this is what the prophet is saying. If you'll cast all this away, he said then, verse 23, he'll give the rain of thy seed, and thou shalt sow the ground with all, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pasture. Ox and young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which uh, hath been winnowed with a shovel and with a fan. They won't be put out to pasture to try to survive, but they'll eat the good of the land. And he said, moreover, moreover, or verse 25, he said, there shall be upon every high mountain and every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter in the day when you decide to slaughter them thoughts, yeah. kill them emotions, stop being a prisoner to your want to. Yeah. Right. And get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Shalom HaSunda. Get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Get in tune with God's provisions. We jump up and do things then the, then the stupid falls. After you do it, the stupid falls. That's when you find out you acted wrong. Then we want to know why the Lord. Did, well, the Lord didn't make that decision. We made that decision. That ain't God's fault. That's our fault. We didn't wait on the Spirit. I think I'm going to go home. This is getting too strong. Amen. I don't even want to hear what I've got to say tonight. I think sometimes that... that, that uh, we just get wanting it so bad, but it ain't the Holy Ghost wanting it. It's us wanting it. And we got to think of what reasons why do we want what we want. I mean, the reason some people, i just tell you right now, God knows exactly where He can trust us, the limit of what He can trust us. Some people, in spite of all their believing, will never prosper above where they are now because they did, they'd get the snottiest nose in town. You couldn't stand them. You couldn't even speak to them. They'd be above everybody. They'd leave the church. They'd leave God out of it. How do you know? Because every time they get a little bit, they do it. Every time God gives them a little bit, they run the road when it's church time, burn up all the money and, and keep the road hot, won't come to church. Then when they run out of money, they have to come back to church again. 
Hallelujah. Preach you better than your shout. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. I've dealt with a, somebody in this church and since I've been pastor here and the lady really God saved her. I mean he saved her and she had a wonderful experience. She filled her with the Holy Ghost right here in this church but she had cancer. And I'm telling you in spite of everything we prayed and spoke she never did seem to get no better. And I couldn't understand why the Lord hadn't healed her. Well, he did heal her. I just couldn't understand why it wasn't manifested. And I went in uh, one day. Uh, I went to the, the home where they lived at. And uh, they pretty much let me know that that woman was a partier before she got into the church. And she had let it be known that if that happened to struck her down, Hallelujah. And even said that if she could get better, she probably would be right back out. She sealed her faith. God didn't do that. That woman done that. She sealed her faith. So I buried her and she went to glory. Her reward's with her. She's all right. Hello, church. God had to do what she limited him. She limited him. Because she didn't believe that he was big enough to heal her from cancer and change her so that she didn't desire to walk in that way anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. I want to be led by visions and revelations. I don't want to be led by my nose. I don't want to be led by my pocket. I don't want to be led by some bunch of social friends. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you right now, as some people love God with all their heart, shout a hole through glory. But if they had the least little bit of money, they'd go back running with them bummed out crew they used to run with, thinking they're going to change me, ain't going to change nobody. They're going to fall right back over into what they were. And as far as I'm concerned, they've put the limits. On God. God ain't going to make you wealthy so you can have a social life. He's going to make you wealthy so you can bless the kingdom, so you can help the poor. Preach your man and you're shouting now. And so you can be freed up at any time God speaks to you. You can take off. That's where I want to be. If He tells me, go ahead, go over and tell this person in this state. I want to be able to financially hop on that plane without even twinging about how much money it was going to cost me and go pray the prayer of faith. I don't care if I had to take a red eye and come in that same night just so I could obey the word of the Lord. That's why I want wealth. I want wealth for the kingdom's sake. I want wealth. So if a little old woman trying to raise a bunch of young and ain't got no vehicle walking the street, I can say, come on down here at this car out on the corner and let's see, can't we work you out a deal? Hallelujah. You understand, that's just one example of it. Well, the other reasons, there's other things, thousands of things that I can say, because people are not being led by that revelation voice on the inside. You enjoying this tonight? You've got to be led by that inner man. You can't be led by, oh God, I'm telling you, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told my wife, we got married, and she knew she was married in the mission. I said, I'm going to tell you right now. I said, you can have friends, but there's very few people that you can ever get close to when you're in the ministry. Because everybody ain't after what you're after. Boy, she found out so soon. You get staying around one place and get attached to folks, and then ain't long for a little bond forms, and then you go in over there, and they after something wholly different than what you're after, and it just turns your stomach. Yep. Amen. Huh? All the charade leaves. The facade peels off. And you find out that deep down, what are people really after? Some of these preachers, what are they after? Are they after being led by the Holy Ghost to see a move of God? Or are they after a big name and a big church and a big salary? And a, hello? We must be led by revelation. By visions of God. I mean, I can't even get to all my scripture now and half of what I want to say because the Holy Ghost is taking this a whole different route 
than what I intended to. But in everything, you must be led by the Holy Ghost. You must be led by the Holy Ghost. You must be led. Let me tell you something about these uh, New Day saints. Amen. I will start to say Latter Day saints. I'm going to say these New Day saints. They beg to have a tune in, tune out center. Watch them. When that preacher's right on what they want, they tune in. Yeah. But when it comes down to who much is given, yeah. much is required, they tune out. Right. If anything makes them mad, they just ignore it till the next line comes. That ain't you ain't being led by the Spirit if that's the way you are. You hear what I'm saying? That ain't being led by the Holy Ghost. You, you want me to tell you the truth about it? Whether you agree with it or not, ain't got two bits to do with the thing. Just because you disagree with something, don't make it not so. If the Holy Ghost said it, it's so. The Holy Ghost showed me uh, two specific regions, places in Africa and the country of Mexico. Just as sure as I'm standing here, if I'll just follow the leading of the Spirit, releasing Him every time I, He brings it to my heart, releasing Him to work that out ever how He wants to, somewhere there'll be a contact, somehow, some way, it'll unveil and open up. Nobody won't have to do no pre-scheduling, planning. Won't have to form no committee. It'll just all unfold as a plan of God if I depend on the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Oh, praise the Lord. My God, I feel what I'm saying to you tonight. I'm telling you, he said in that day of the great slaughter, when you kill off them emotions and them feelings and them headstrong ways of ours, that in the glory to God, that interferes with what the Spirit's trying to push forth in us. Then what did he say? There's going to be rivers. Why does he use things like that? Because these are all things that flow freely of their own accord. God's are bringing us all to the place where we not going to have to come to the altar and beat that altar and say, God, you said and all reason we're saying that is because we won't believe it. And you thought you said and beat it and beat it and try to convince him. No, 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 no. He said, I'm going to release a river. Yeah. I'm going to release a stream. They flow. If it ain't flowing, just leave it alone. It ain't God if it ain't flowing. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to tell you something. That we got a perfect example of that with Sister Ida. She just went through this process. She went to doctor after doctor to see about that hip. And every time she went to see about it, it weren't no flow, it was a force. They was trying to force her to do stuff she didn't want to do. And then when it all come to the, the end, they'd all end up saying they couldn't do what it was. Force, force, force. And then all of a sudden, she just makes her mind up, I'm done with it, it's in the hands of the Lord, if, it, if it's supposed to be, it'll be. It'll make a way for it. If it ain't, I'm done. And without her doing another thing, this one man, this one doctor, got in contact with her and told her the whole reason all along was everything them people was wanting to do didn't need doing. Just one thing needed doing. They weren't near as bad as the other. And he's the one noted. And he went in there and done it. And, got, and now she ain't even had to force her recovery. Yes, she just flowed right into it. Hallelujah. Praise Two God. weeks later, she's driving and walking on that stick and then walking yes. today without it. It's supposed to still be on a walker. Why? Because she waited till the thing fell in a line. You don't force nothing. If you're having to force it, it ain't God. Stop it. And if you put it, oh, glory be to God. If you're trying to sell a vehicle and that thing won't sell no matter what you do, and every time they come, it falls through, it ain't time to sell it. Stop it. If you're trying to buy one, 
I don't care about one in your yard got rust falling on it. If, if you're trying to buy one and it won't go through and it won't go through and it won't, don't sit there and try to hammer that block through the hole. Just stop. Stop. I know this is simple, but this is the way it is. If you're trying to get something done and it ain't doing, it, listen to me. It, the, the Lord ain't working with you on it. It's time to just stop. And somebody said, well, what to do? Just ignore it. Leave it alone. When, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. What if, what if God won't give you one? And if He gives you one, then you give yours. Boy, they could have had an amen on the first one. And that last one, they fell off about half. It, don't you believe if somebody gave you a car, the Lord would have you give yours? Amen. Amen. You know, when I used to get needing a few suits. You know what I did? I always could still do it. Go to the closet. I don't search back there for them ones I don't wear neither. I get about four good ones out, find us some shirts and ties to match them, and I uh, uh, hang them all nice hangers, and I have Heather carry them to somebody that can wear them, and it ain't long Hallelujah. Before I'll be going across the street and somebody will come put a hundred dollar bill in my hand. I'll stick that one in my pocket and go on. Then a few weeks later, here come another 40. And then here come a little check in the car thanking me. Hallelujah. And then I get up and go to town and I buy me them few new suits I was needing. Well, glory to God. But on the other hand, I got on suits sometime and I preach to you that I had before I got married. And I've been married 15 years this July, so they're about 16 years old. They look just as good as the day I bought them because I don't go home, throw them in the floor and stomp all over them. I hang them up and take care of what God blessed me with. And so He works it both ways. He makes your robe not wear out, makes your feet not swell, and it, oh hallelujah, and He'll let you spoil the Egyptians and get all the silver and the gold. I'm talking about an inner leading of the Holy Ghost right here on the inside of your cool eye. You don't ever have to sit in a chair and wonder again. You got the knower, you got the answer, you got the teacher, you got the voice, and you ain't got to go get it. You just need to release it right here on the inside of you. Can you say amen? And in the day of a great slaughter, how many believes the Lord has you in a place of great slaughter where He is destroying memories and thoughts that have blocked and hindered you from knowing how to receive from God? We sing that song, He's erasing all the bad memories. Amen. And then He said in verse 25, or 26, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. In other words, you ain't going to have no nights all days. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. One day is going to be like the light of seven days. Woo! <laughs> We're coming to a day when we'll have all revelation. How many sevenfold spiritual days does the Bible use to describe perfection? Seven of them. Six days the Lord made the earth. On the seventh, He rested, sanctified it, and called it holy. Told Moses, tell all of them not to work on the seventh day. Just rest in me. That's my day. Yeah. Woo. And here the Holy Ghost tells us when we release all that stuff, all that hold on and try out. And yeah. Glory be to God. You talk about an easy life. Yes. When you no longer think it's up to you. My God. Then guess what happens? Even your, even your nighttime turns into daytime. 
and the daytime turns into the light of a sevenfold day. Ooh, hear me. The Lord will bring his church to the place where all things will be revealed. All things. There will be nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Is that what Jesus said? Of course, you know we always say, yeah. And every time you find out somebody's sin, only reason you gloat over that is because they found out theirs and not yours. That's the only reason you get happy over that. The only reason anybody jumps up and says, yes, the Lord said he'd reveal it. That's because he didn't reveal theirs. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. That ain't what Jesus meant. He meant there ain't nothing in this kingdom that's covered up that ain't going to be uncovered. And he said that is done in secret. He'll reward. And he said it'd be shouted from the rooftops. Oh, Holy Ghost, be our teacher. We've, been, we've taught ourselves. We've been taught by religion. We've been like Elijah. We've been fed of a raven. We've been fed of a woman. Lord God, bring that angel on that's got that bread of supernatural increase that we may be fed of holy things. Oh, praise His wonderful name. And how many of you know in the book of Nehemiah, he said there wasn't nobody going to eat no holy bread until one got up who had a urine and the thumb. And you know what the Urim and the Thummim means? Light and revelation, perfections. Oh, hallelujah. If there ain't nobody preaching by revelation, there ain't no holy bread being served. Right. Amen. Amen. You would just live that regular old grab it life trying to race to the line, beat somebody there, and get your hand on the first stick before the next group comes. Hoping you don't get beat out. Well, where do we see that? In John 5. There's a man been in, uh, the important man been lame his whole life in the house of five porches. Who of the Bethesda? Said, I have no man to put me in. They all get ahead of me. Jesus stopped that right then. Said, rise. Take up your bed. And get to walking, brother. You're already healed. I'm the fool. I'm the angel. I'm the one stirring the water. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I got to cap this off so we can go home tonight. Oh, I don't know if I've helped you, but I've, I've uh, had myself a time tonight just going through this as the Lord leads and seeing where His desire is that all things flow freely from the Holy Ghost in my life. Amen. Amen. If I'm sitting at home, even in my mind, trying to figure out how it's going to work, I'm not dependent on the Holy Ghost within me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's read on just a little bit more. He said, There'd be a seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach and heals the stroke of their wound. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far burning with his anger and the burden is heavy and his lips are full of indignation and his tongue has a devouring fire. How many know that's the word alive? That's a living word. And he said that his breath is an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with a sieve of vanity and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people who cause them to err. Oh, God, I want him to do that. I want him to get in all those nations and just start pulling them out of our way tonight. Amen. See the imagination and condemnation and denomination, all them nations the Lord needs to get in the middle of and start causing them to err. Get out of our way. Thoughts, get out of our way. Condemnation, get out of our way. Hesitation. We're coming out. We're coming through this thing. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm going to come in and breathe into your life. That's the Holy Ghost. The breath is the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of the Lord. 
And the Lord said, in the midst of all your, your thinking and your, all this struggle going on in your mind, I'm going to come into your world or take a good inhalation of who I am and I'm going to breathe on your situation. Man. And when I do, I'm going to scatter those nations. I'm going to make them air. I'm going to get them to the jaw and pull them out of your way. Glory be to God. Why? Because the battle's not yours. It's the Lord. You Lord. shall not need to fight in this battle. But stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Right. Oh, hallelujah yeah. to God. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. When you make up your mind to be led by revelation knowledge, the Holy Ghost comes in. And all them armies you couldn't do anything about, He breathes on them. He blows them out of your pathway. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He sifts them in His own seed. He gets them a hold of them and shakes them. And everything that can be, will be, and it'll be removed. Glory to God. <laughs> and finally he said, you'll have a song, verse 29, in the night. Gladness of heart when one goeth with a pipe. Well, we know that's the opposite of what Jesus saw when he was in the earth. He said this bunch said, who shall I like this generation to? We're like another one that said, well, we, we, we piped unto you and you would not dance. We rejoice toward you and you would not laugh. We weep to mourn toward you and you would not weep. But he said, you are going to dance when they pipe. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to have gladness of heart. Why? Because you've come to the mountain of the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You've come to the rulership of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, my son, hallelujah. You've come to the place in me where no longer are you afraid to just give up and let Jesus take over. Give up and let Jesus take over. Oh, praise the Lord. And the Lord shall cause His glorious voice to be heard and will show lightning, a lighting down of His arm with the indignation of His anger and the flame of divine fire. He'll scatter the tempest and hailstones. Glory be to God. He'll sweep through. The, and what does Isaiah 28 say? He does with that hail storm. He said, He sweeps away the refuge, refuge of lies you've hid under. Hmm. This is too deep to get in one night. That's all right. We, we're grounded enough to know. But anyway, this don't worry about it. If you give up, so I say, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? Can I just dare to leave it undone? Can I just dare to leave it unfinished? Can I just take my hands off of it in the shape it's in? Yes, you can. Well, what am I going to do with all that mess? God said He's going to blow on it with His Spirit and straighten it all out. Hallelujah. If you've got a relative, you've been fighting, 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 and ain't got no one, you still ain't speaking one, you say, what am I going to do? Just give it up. Just take your hands off of it. Just stop trying to force it to happen. Well, what, what's going to happen if I do that? What if we never speak again? No, it'll never be that way. Because you're giving the Holy Ghost permission to go forth in your life and handle that situation. And I'm telling every one of you, by the prophetic force of God, give the Holy Ghost permission to get in the middle of everything in your life and have His way. You have tried long enough. You have fought long enough. If the battle ain't yours, what are you doing with it? Randy Newberry wrote a book said, If the battle's the Lord's, why am I so tired? Hallelujah. If the battle's the Lord's, give up. Give up. And let Jesus take over. Let Him have it. If you really trust Him, if you're not afraid that He'll do you evil, then you let the thing go. Bless God. If Paul's going to get out of that city, he's got to entrust himself in that basket and into the hand of them men to let him down on that wall. And if you're going to get out of this mess, there ain't but one way out, and that's the Holy Ghost. You've got to take the spiritual way out of the thing. And you say, praise the Lord. I got a few debts, ain't got many, God's blessed me. I don't hardly have no debt. But I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't afraid to just turn loose and let God just see what He'll do about it. Hallelujah. 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 There's people that go to this church, they love this church, they remember this church, but I'll tell you they slight so bad. I don't know what to do about it. I've talked and I've called and my finger bones is numb. I'll tell you what I've done. I've turned it loose. I've let it go. Let the Holy Ghost get in the middle of it. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He'll breathe. He'll breathe on it. And everything you've got tonight in Jesus' name, don't you dare force a grip on it no more. If it's pulling the other way, it's because God wants you to turn the road loose. Who love I shut another one? If you can't hold it steady, it's because the Lord's wanting you to give it up to Him and let Him work and move in the middle of that thing. Glory be to God. If all your efforts have failed, then it's time for you to walk away from that situation and believe God. I got a situation I'm thinking of right now and I thought it was perfectly straightened out and I better rejoicing over it and then if that then you know it gets a little boogie again. But I want you to know one thing, there ain't nothing to do but just let the Holy Ghost have permission to get in the middle of it and work it out. Hallelujah. Give Him rain. Give Him the lead way. Give Him the head. Don't buck against what God's doing. If you feel a pullback, let the rope go. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 For heaven. Have I ever let you down? Have I ever not come through? No, and nor will I start it now, saith the Lord. I am faithful. I am on time. I am in the habit of blessing my people. And this not know ye that it is my good pleasure to come down in the midst of thee and walk through thy world and mend my broken heart and live thy spirit and raise the dead that has gone and passed. I breathe this night new life into things. I breathe this night the Holy Ghost in the midst of thee and speak unto thee and say this night my children, my people, be not afraid to lean on me. Be not afraid to trust in me for I am strong and I know how to do battle, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Oh, stand there and praise it. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, shalom on the Hallelujah. 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 Anything that's jerky. When you think you got the hold and you didn't have the hold, just let it all go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's people. I don't care if it's your bills. Hallelujah. God will cancel that thing out. Just go on paying it like you have to. And give the rest of it to the Lord. Pay your part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you made that debt, you pay that debt. But don't pay it believing you're going to be bound to it for 30 years. Come on. 20 years. Come on. Six years. Seven years. Huh? Amen. No, no, no. You just, and don't be trying to come up with ways to figure out how to pay it off. Just let give the Holy Ghost permission to do His work. He's waiting, standing there, idle, wishing He'd have a king command him and tell him, I give you permission to do something about this. I give you permission to stop this. I give you permission Oh, yes. yes. Hallelujah. And then when he starts blowing all the papers off the table, don't you get on your knees and try to pick them all back up and stack them back up. Yeah. Uh, I just had a sort of mini vision there. I saw somebody sitting at a table with a stack of papers, and it was all neat and in order. And the Holy Ghost blew through and all them papers scattered. But I saw whoever that was jump down off that chair and try to restack them papers. And the Lord told me to say that. Don't you get down there and try to stack up 
what God broke bold on, on off of there. Amen. Because it could be that your answer is on the other side of that stack and you haven't seen it because you was looking in the papers instead of the answer. If that stupid paper said the same thing for a year, it ain't going to change what it said. Quit looking at it. Are you listening to me? We are going to become a people who are moved only by visions and revelations. If God don't show us, we don't do it. Amen. Right. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you this. He won't never, it won't never happen that He'll show you anything that won't come to pass. Everything He shows you will, will come to pass. Every time. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Oh, Kalaki Alabosho Tora Basai. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Chris, you got that one. Give it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm supernaturally changing the lyrics of your song, says the Lord. Praise God. And I'm getting into the melody and I'm causing everything that has been chaotic to sit down. Amen. Glory to God. To every storm I'm rising up and saying peace. And to every current that has been out of the flow it shall come in such a direction and thou shalt say, where is this thing taking me? Oh, but thou shalt know in the days to come that from now on but when thou shalt say these things, thou shalt know that I am producing. Hold up, I, shall know. I am producing my will in your life, yes, says Lord. the Lord. Yes, oh, Lord. and the dimensions that shall come unto thee, thou shalt not even be able to math with thy mind, but thou shalt oh, know this day. That now is the time of miracles. Now is the set time for the miraculous to take place in your situation, says the Lord. Glory. 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 Lift your hand and thank him. Thank him. Satanuna Mando Kura Bosukabaramna Boshala Mahai. Kura Makana Masandala Mahoy. Shout out all over our Glory to God. 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 Thank Hallelujah. Now you know what you can almost feel this sanctuary full tonight. You can view if you could get in the spirit, you'd have a vision of this place overrunning. Because it's the words like this is going to people that are hungry for. They're not hungry for all that junk. They're hungry to find out what is God's plan. What is God's way? What is? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. You give it up. You just let go and start flowing in the Holy Ghost. Start flowing in His presence. Start flowing in His glory. Start flowing, flowing, flowing. We've had it wrong for years. We think the Holy Ghost shows up and we shout a little bit and then go home. Wasn't that good? That ain't what He showed up for. He's going to get in the middle of everything. Everything. Amen. It's going to be hard for you to do anything without the visions and revelations of the Holy Ghost Amen. taking you over. I used to remain text Sunday morning. Paul's own words in 2 Corinthians 12. I shall come to visions and revelation. Oh, hallelujah. He told that church at Corinth, not only have I had them, I'm going to have some more. I shall come too. I'm not putting that off as just one time thing in my life. I'm going to live in the realm of visions and revelation.
revelation. If you don't know what to do about something, you get the word of the Lord. You get a hold of God and get the answer. Don't you be part of the crowd. Just fall over in that crowd and get swallowed up in that old black hole of uh, 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 what is coincidental happenings and, 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 and bygones, bygones and all this stuff. You get a hold of the word of the Lord and you get him speaking right here on the inside of you. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. You know, one time there's a little uh, sporadic, I guess you'd say trouble, it was mouth trouble more than it was anything. Stirred up, I mean way back, way back before I, I was pastor here. And, and, and I found that I didn't like it because we don't always smooth, you know, but that got a little testy. And I thought with all my heart, I just knew that I had it pegged. I knew just how it was. I'd already labeled the one that I was sure was the instigator of it. And I was praying that way. Hallelujah. And one morning, I went and sat down on the pew up there behind the organ and the Holy Ghost showed me in a vision. The very one I thought had no part in it was a ring leader of it. And the other two was just satellites receiving the signal. And that's how the Lord showed it in a vision. This one person was the main transmitter and the others were satellites. They were only beaming what they had been told. And guess what? The Lord took care of it. But I tell you, I sure thought in my own thinking I had it paid. I didn't have it paid. I missed it all together. Because that's probably the way I wanted it to be. To go to the truth. But the Holy Ghost, by vision and revelation, did that. And I got up, and in a very unknowing way to anybody else, was able to take care of that instantly on the microphone without nobody knowing I took care of it but the but the ones that wow. needed to know. Yeah. And as a sign to me, the Lord showed me I hit it because first thing happened, they scattered like chickens. I don't mean later, I mean instantly. Two of them shot out the door and the other one went to crying like a baby. And that was the Lord letting me know. Right. But after that, he shut up. Mm -hmm. And nothing come of it. Yes. Let the Lord do it, he do it all. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Get in this book, because this, this teaches you just how to flow it such as this. Right. Amen. Lord. And tells you testimony after testimony of people who didn't know nothing about nothing. And suddenly, yeah. the light came on. Yeah. And it was, well, you call it what you want to do, revelation, gifts of the Spirit, Holy Ghost. It's all the same. Lord, it worketh. Amen. And His people. But we're not supposed to be ignorant. I would not have you ignorant, brethren. How many times does the Bible say that? Get a hold of this. Live by it. Practice it. Put it to work. And watch the mountains be removed in your life, one by one, as the Holy Ghost does His work through you. God bless you. We love you. It means keep you this way, but I, I ain't responsible for that last few minutes. The Holy Ghost took over. Amen. I love everyone to see you back here. Prayer service tomorrow, and then uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Amen.